1943, over the Eastern Front, Germany's greatest fighter ace plummeted from the sky. The culprit wasn't enemy fire. It was the very engine meant to secure Luftwaffe dominance. How did the DB-605, the heart of the Reich's most advanced fighters, become a killer of its own pilots? As the war turned against Germany, the Luftwaffe desperately needed an edge. American bombers darkened European skies by day, British Lancasters by night. The Messerschmitt Bf 109, backbone of German fighter forces, needed more power, more altitude, more speed. Daimler Benz promised salvation with the DB 605, an engine that would push their fighters beyond Allied reach. But in the race between ambition and engineering reality, something had to give. And when it did, Germany's best pilots paid the price. The DB 605 was meant to be invincible. 35.7-liter inverted V12 masterpiece pushing 1,475 horsepower through precision-crafted pistons. This wasn't just an engine upgrade. It was liquid-cooled thunder, a mechanical marvel that transformed the BF-109G into a high-altitude predator. With its direct fuel injection system spraying life in the 12 cylinders, the 605 could haul a fully armed fighter to 39,000 feet, where American B-17s thought they were safe. Weighing in at 756 kilograms, this aluminum and steel beast breathed through a sophisticated supercharger that can press thin air into dense power. When a DB-605 roared to life, mechanics felt it in their bones, with a distinctive inverted V-12 growl that meant business. It powered not just the BF-109G, but the BF-110 night fighters and later, some of the most advanced aircraft the Luftwaffe would field. This was engineering excellence, German precision at its finest, or so everyone believed. The numbers alone commanded respect. Compression ratio of 7.3 to 1 to 7.5 to 1, depending on variant. A bore of 154 millimeters and a stroke of 160 millimeters created perfect mechanical leverage. The engine's inverted design wasn't just clever packaging. It lowered the center of gravity, improved pilot visibility, and allowed the devastating centerline cannon to fire through the propeller hub. Each DB-605 contained over 4,000 individual parts, assembled with tolerances measured in thousands of millimeters. The supercharger alone was a masterpiece, automatically adjusting boost pressure through a barometric controller that sensed altitude. This wasn't just an engine. It was the crystallization of decades of German engineering prowess, the ultimate evolution of Daimler-Benz's liquid-cooled legacy. The DB-605's birth was painful, rushed by wartime desperation. Engineers at Daimler-Benz faced an impossible task, create more power from essentially the same design as the older DB-601, but do it faster, cheaper, and under Allied bombing raids. They increased bore and stroke, pushing displacement to 33.9 to 35.7 liters. They strengthened the crankshaft, redesigned the supercharger, and prayed their calculations were right. The calculations made in Stuttgart's design offices didn't account for reality at 25,000 feet. Test pilots reported alarming engine temperatures, pistons cracked, connecting rods snapped, oil systems failed. The Reich Air Ministry, desperate for results, ignored the warnings. Make it work, they demanded. Our pilots need these engines now. Engineers worked through air raids, racing against time while B-17s pounded their factories. They implemented hasty fixes. Stronger valve springs here, modified oil pumps there. Each solution created new problems. The engine that was supposed to save the Luftwaffe was becoming its Achilles heel. But with Goring breathing down their necks and the eastern front crumbling, there was no time for proper testing. The DB-605 went to war half ready, and pilots would pay for that decision in blood. The pressure cooker atmosphere spawned dangerous shortcuts. Original specifications called for 100-hour test runs before certification. The DB-605 received approval after just 30 hours. Critical endurance testing that would have revealed bearing failures skipped. High altitude trials that could have exposed oil system flaws abbreviated. Engineers who protested found themselves transferred to the Eastern Front. Those who remained learned to keep quiet and pray their calculations held. Internal memos discovered after the war revealed senior engineers' private terror. We're sending time bombs into the sky, but production quotas trumped safety concerns. By late 1942, factories were churning out 1,000 engines monthly, each one a potential coffin for Germany's dwindling pool of experienced pilots. If you're fascinated by the dark side of wartime innovation, hit subscribe. We're uncovering more untold stories of aviation's most controversial engines. Despite its demons when the DB-605 worked, it was magnificent. 
In the hands of experts like Eric Hartman and Gerhard Barkhorn, 109Gs with healthy engines carve through bomber formations like surgical knives. At full throttle, the 605 could push a Gustav to 640 kilometers per hour, fast enough to catch American escorts napping. Its high altitude performance finally gave German pilots parity with the P-47 Thunderbolts that had been dominating the sky ceiling. The engine's direct injection meant no carburetor to fail in negative G maneuvers. German pilots could push their fighters through moves that would kill a Merlin. When everything clicked, when oil pressure held steady and cylinder head stayed cool, the DB-605 turned good pilots into aces and aces into legends. Even Hans Joachim Marseille, flying his final missions in a DB-605 powered BF-109G in September 1942, demonstrated the engine's potential before his tragic death when his engine caught fire on September 30th, forcing him to bail out, only to be struck by his aircraft's tail. The engine sang its finest song in the vertical flight. The supercharger, when it wasn't destroying itself, maintained power where Allied engines gasped for air. Luftwaffe pilots learned to drag fights high, where their DB-605s held the advantage. Above 8,000 meters, one pilot recalled, we owned the sky until the engine decided otherwise. The DB-605's combat record when divorced from its reliability issues was stunning. During the summer of 1943, JG-52 on the Eastern Front achieved a 12 to 1 kill ratio. With many victories credited to the superior climb rate and acceleration the 605 provided, the engine's response was instantaneous. Cracked the throttle and 1,475 horses erupted into action. No turbo lag, no hesitation. In the diving attacks the 109G excelled at, pilots could maintain control at speeds that would send allied fighters into compression stalls. The automatic propeller pitch control, synchronized with the engine management system, meant pilots could focus on fighting, not fiddling with controls. When intercepting bombers, the DB-605's ability to maintain power up to 10,000 meters was decisive. Fortress gunners learned to fear the sight of 109Gs climbing toward them with that characteristic DB-605 exhaust note, a harsh metallic scream that meant death was coming from below. But here's what the propaganda ministry never told. The DB-605 was eating Germany's best pilots alive. The rush development had created a time bomb. The most catastrophic decision? Switching from ball bearings to plane bearings to save strategic materials. When combined with increasingly poor grades of wartime lubricants, this led to bearing failures without warning. Under combat power settings, oil temperatures soared past design limits. Worse, material shortages forced engineers to reduce nickel content and exhaust valves from 13.5% to just 8%. These compromised valves couldn't resist corrosion, scaling in use and causing pre-ignition that led to catastrophic detonation. The Reich Air Ministry knew. Internal documents labeled the DB-605 a sick engine that required constant modifications. Carl Mitterdorfer of JG-300 would later testify, our supercharged DB-605 AS engines would barely make it beyond the fateful 50-hour mark. We were astonished to read that the Russians complained American engines only lasted 300 hours instead of 350. In my Stoffel, engines had to be changed two or three times before finding one that ran satisfactory. The statistics were damning. Luftwaffe maintenance records showed that 30% of all DB5605 engines failed before reaching their 100-hour service interval. Compare that to the Merlin's 5% failure rate or even the complex BMW 801 radial at 12%. But the numbers only tell part of the story. Each failure meant a dead or traumatized pilot. The psychological effect was devastating. Pilots began refusing maximum power settings, even in combat. They'd rather face enemy guns that push their throttles forward and risk engine detonation. Veterans developed a sixth sense for impending failure, unusual vibrations, slight temperature spikes, the faintest whiff of burning oil. They'd abort missions at the first sign, knowing that pressing on meant death. The Luftwaffe wasn't just losing pilots on engine failures, it was losing the aggressive spirit that made their aces legendary. The crisis peaked during Operation Zitadella, the Battle of Kursk in July 1943. As hundreds of 109Gs rose to meet the Soviet Air Armada, DB-605s failed by the dozen. The Luftwaffe's own records show Jacques de Schweda III lost more aircraft to engine failures than enemy action during the first week of the battle. Gunter Rahl, one of the history's greatest aces with 275 victories would later describe the terror of engine failure. Though he survived the war despite being shot down eight times, he knew that engine failure was worse than enemy bullets because it gave no warning and no chance to fight back. 
the scale of the disaster became clear in classified Luftwaffe reports. Entire squadrons were grounded, not for lack of fuel or pilots, but because their DB-605s couldn't be trusted. Ground crews worked around the clock, cannibalizing engines from damaged aircraft, desperately trying to keep fighters airworthy. The introduction of MW-50 methanol water injection in early 1944, meant to boost power, initially made things worse. Despite containing anti-corrosion additives, the extreme temperatures and pressures when using MW-50 at full boost caused piston failures after just a few combat sorties. The irony was bitter. Germany's most advanced fighter engine was doing what years of Allied bombing couldn't, destroying the Luftwaffe from within. Mechanics began painting small crosses on cowlings, one for each engine that had survived 50 hours. Few aircraft earned more than two. Psychological warfare was complete when Soviet propaganda broadcasts began taunting German pilots. Why should we shoot you down? Your engines will do it for us. The taunts stung because they were true. By war's end, Daimler Benz had produced approximately 42,400 DB605 engines, each one a testament to both German engineering brilliance and the fatal cost of rush development. The final variants, the DB605D and AS models, finally solved most reliability issues through chrome-plated exhaust valves and improved bearings, but they arrived too late. The pilots who could have used them were already dead, victims of the very engines meant to protect them. The DB605 story became a cautionary tale in engineering circles. Post-war analysis revealed that given six more months of proper testing, most fatal flaws could have been prevented. The bearing problems, the valve scaling, the oil system failures, all were solvable with time and proper materials. Instead, wartime pressure created an engine that was simultaneously one of the most advanced power plants of its era and a killer of those who depended on it. Today, restored DB605s thunder at air shows their distinctive inverted V growl sending chills through crowds. But aviation historians know the truth. That sound once meant Russian roulette for the pilots who heard it every day. In museums, placards list impressive specifications, power output, altitude performance, technical innovations. They rarely mention the ghosts. The engine's dark legacy shaped post-war aviation development profoundly. When developing the jet age, Engineers on both sides of the Iron Curtain studied the DB-605 disaster as a master class in what not to do. Testing protocols became sacred. No amount of political pressure could override safety margins. The DB-605 had taught the ultimate lesson. Dead pilots can't win wars. Her aviation's obsession with redundancy, backup systems for backup systems, traces directly to the carnage of 1943-1944. Every pre-flight check, every maintenance interval, Every safety margin built into modern engines exists because the DB-605 showed what happens when desperation overrides prudence. The ghosts of the Luftwaffe's finest still whisper from museum engines. Test it properly, or bury your pilots. It's a whisper the aviation world has never forgotten. The DB-605 embodies the darkest paradox of wartime innovation. How the pressure to win can transform breakthrough engineering into tragedy. It was an engine born of desperation, refined in chaos, and deployed before its time. Every component was precisely machined, every system carefully designed, yet the sum of these perfect parts was fatally flawed. Perhaps the real lesson of the DB-605, technical excellence means nothing if rushed into service. The engine that should have secured air superiority instead bled the Luftwaffe of most of its precious resource, experienced pilots. In the end, the Allies didn't need to shoot down Germany's best. The DB-605 did it for them. When we admire warbirds at museums, when we hear their engines roar back to life, we're witnessing more than restored machinery. We're seeing monuments to the pilots who trusted these engines with their lives, and too often paid the ultimate price for that trust. The DB-605 story reminds us that in war, the greatest dangers don't always come from the enemy. Sometimes they come from the very tools meant to ensure survival. What World War II engine story should we investigate next? The Pratt & Whitney R2800 that powered American victory? Or the Rolls-Royce Griffin that gave the Spitfire its final edge? Drop your choice in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe for more untold stories from aviation's most dramatic era. Because every engine has secrets. We're here to reveal them all.